This is the official EFL podcast. Hello again and welcome to the podcast and a special edition of the show today. We're joined by former Leeds United, Preston, Everton, just to name a few clubs. Jermaine Beckford is on the show. Jermaine, first of all... Hi, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very well. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. First of all, I'm, I'm just going to play something back for you, just to sort of get things going. Did you, this is a, a quick memory from, from your days at Leeds United, the, the first season you broke through, a, an interview which you did after a match against Crew, I'm, I'm sure you, you'll remember it as you hear it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead, let's see it. That's, that's what we want from each game, we want the three points. Um, and like everybody can see what, what our aim is now. Um, so It's all about the top two, it's all about automatic now, is it? We, we want to get it, no, like, whether it's top two or whether it's through the playoffs. That. Just finally, Jermaine, there's a fair bit of transfer speculation about you. Where do you see your own future? What shirt am I wearing, bruv? Are you being serious? Jermaine, what, what are your memories <laughs> of that, that interview at the time? It, it, it's something which goes down in Leeds United fans' folklore, really, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, it does. It, was, um, it brings back great memories, if I'm honest with you. I completely forgot about that interview. Um, <laughs> I don't really know how to respond to it. It was, um, it was a great response, though, wasn't it? It gave you sort of an iconic status to, to Leeds United fans. You, you, you probably won't be um, forgotten just for the not not for what you did in the football pitch, but just for the the, the response to that question. Yeah, well, it was true. It was um, it was in regard to to rumours that had been circulating about me moving on to uh, to a different club, um, which was a it's a. It's Still a massive club now. It was um, Newcastle, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Actually, but, I think I think if if I'd correct you, I think it was Derby County because Dennis, oh, Dennis be yeah, because Dennis Wise actually um, responded to the same question, and I think he, he said at the time that Derby, despite Leeds being in League One, he, he said that Dar- why would you join Derby because Leeds United are a bigger club than Derby, despite them being in the Premier League at the time. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I remember. I remember. What? 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 Um, did, did you did you sort of did did Dennis say that to you personally or was that just for I don't know the the sort of like you know to put yourself out there well, for he, the media? He he broke it down to me. He obviously Dennis being um, having the status that he has explained to me. Look, just because a team is in a higher division than yourselves, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bigger club. And my head wasn't turned by Derby. The league above was enticing. I'll be lying if I said it wasn't, but. The, the allure of playing for Leeds United, there's, there's nothing like it. I, I want to touch on that throughout the, the podcast, later on in the podcast, but I, I just want to focus on coming back to the beginning of, of your career now. What was, you know, when you first were coming through, what, what was Jermaine Beckford in terms of the, the player? What, what did you have to offer when you were there at, I believe you were at Chelsea in your youth career. What, what was Jermaine Beckford like as a footballer then? Raw, very raw. Quick uh, and a great finisher, if I do say so myself. <laughs> On occasion, I had I was very selfish in terms of the way that I played. Um, every game needed to be focused and based around myself and my attributes. Um, but you don't learn until later on in life, after you've played a few games, that you're not necessarily the centre of attention. And if you are, it's not always the way that you the, the game is not always played the way that you want it to be played to suit you it's um it's a game of patience it's, it's a game of opportunities and that's something that I didn't learn until a little bit later on in my career I believe you, you were let go by Chelsea obviously and then you went to to non-league how how difficult was that being at a club like Chelsea at, at the time it was during, I think it was during the, the the end of the, well, the start of the Roman Abramovich era, wasn't it, when you were let go? Yeah, um, I remember um, training and seeing Gianfranco Zola walking in, walking past me, thinking, this guy's tiny. And then I saw him take his T-shirt off. He hung, he hung it on the top of the, um, the crossbar so that it was dangling down in the top corner. And he had like six or seven footballs and he placed them around the edge of the 18-yard box. And he took a free kick. He took six or seven free kicks. And with every one bar, maybe one, he hit the, um, the T-shirt that was hanging down. And I thought to myself, wow, it doesn't necessarily matter what you look like or in terms of the, the height or how big you are or anything like that. 
it's all about technical ability. If you've got the technical ability, I think you're you're the majority of the way there. And he definitely had that. And it was leaving those moments that made me. It brought me crashing down to earth with a with a thud. If I'm honest, that when you're when you're that age, you think to yourself, "Well, I've made it. I'm at I'm at Chelsea. I'm at one of the biggest clubs in the world at the time." And, you know, I'm I'm training and I'm seeing these guys on a on a regular basis, and then all of a sudden, you you pick up an injury and then you're you're released and you're you're kind of discarded. Um, for a for a 14, 15, 16 year old, it's it's devastating. It's devastating. But fortunately, I had a great, a great um, uh, unit around myself, i.e., my parents and my brother and all my friends, etc. You know, they helped me through that that difficult period. Yeah, and I imagine you know, if we look back at the time now, it was obviously very difficult for players to break through at Chelsea at that time. Going to non-league, yeah. though, a real culture shock for you, having, you know, you mentioned there working with, you know, the likes of Gianfranco Zola, seeing role models like that in training every day, going to, you know, no disrespect to non-league football, but, you know, it's a different yeah. environment, isn't it? Completely different. Completely different. At the time, it wasn't as professional as, um, as obviously, Chelsea, you expect Chelsea to be which was to be expected. But I also was thrown in at the deep end. So I went straight into men's football when I left there. And I was still I was still, um, still quite young. Um, so I was getting kicked left, right, centre. I was, I was getting bullied off the ball. And that's where I had to learn, you know, if you're not, you're not going to have it necessarily your own way all the time. You have to, you have to try and find what works for you um, and, and perfect it. So I tried to perfect the art of sending the defender the wrong way without the ball. But then every time I lost the defender, I was still waiting for a while. It, it started coming and, you know, you, you start building a relationship and understanding the players that you're playing with and against. But it's not quite to the same standard that you're used to. You know, so that, that was um, that was something to, to, that was something difficult to get used to initially. But after a while, you, you enjoy it and you forget about where you've been and you forget about the, the players you played with and against. And you adapt to to what you're playing with now, you know. So it's um, yeah, I, I I like to think it, it stood me a good stead and gave me a good base to where I I needed to be, where I wanted to be. Yeah, I've spoken to a lot of different players who've had different upbringings, who've come through either non-league or come through the EFL, eventually got to the Premier League. It really does yeah. ground you, doesn't it? Having that chance to play you know, full men's football as opposed to just playing in the, the academy systems. Yeah, of course, of course. Because in the academy systems, you see people that are the same age as you and you think to yourself, well, I've got nothing to be worried about because he's the same age. If I if I foul him, he's not going to get up and it's not going to be a problem. Whereas you're playing against men, you're playing against guys that are a similar age to your, your parents. And, you know, you look at them in a different light, you, you show them a lot more respect, probably a little bit too much respect in terms of when you're on the football pitch. But, you know, it's um, it's it's almost a subconscious thing. So yeah, it was um, it was definitely a, an eye opener. <laughs> definitely an eye opener. And of course, you had three three years there, decent goal scoring record at the time. Did you know that you were yeah. attracting interest from teams in in the divisions above? Initially, no. Because I was just doing my my thing. I was I was playing football. I was enjoying myself. Um, I had a great team around me. I had a great strike partner, and so. I was just enjoying myself on and off the field. There wasn't that much pressure either. So I just, I just took it day by day and, and enjoyed myself until one day my manager at Wilson at the time, Gordon Bartlett, he said he's got an agent that would like to speak to me. It was a guy that he'd, he'd worked with in the past. Would I be interested? And obviously, when you hear the word agent, you think to yourself, oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> Not really knowing anything about it. And it kind of snowballed from there, if I'm honest. The agent at the time said to me, look, I've um I've got a club that, that are really interested in signing you for X amount of money a week, and it was it was like four times more than I was getting working at REC. So being 22 years old and and being offered a lot more money to do something that I absolutely love doing, it was a no brainer. So I just jumped at the, the opportunity, jumped, jumped at the chance. I said to him, "Yep, some of them. Where is it? <laughs> it was a long way away." <laughs> um, was that Crystal then, Palace at the time, or was that Leeds who were who were giving you that offer? Because I believe you had a trial at Crystal Palace, didn't you? 
yeah, it was uh, it was Yeovil, Yeovil Town um, initially, and then I was on the motorway on the way to Yeovil to sign a deal, and then I got a, a phone call from the same agent saying, "Well, you can sign for Yeovil now, or you could go and try like Crystal Palace and Charlton and Watford and and see how it goes there." And obviously, I'm I'm thinking to myself, "Wow, no disrespect to Yeovil, but these clubs are they're huge clubs." Let me um, let me try my luck and, and see how I get on and see what I think and see whether they like me, see whether I can I can keep up with the pace, etc. Um, and it got to the point where I enjoyed time at Charlton, met some amazing people. The same at Crystal Palace as well, met some amazing people, learned a lot of valuable lessons now. Um, and then I ended up going to Watford and training there for. I was meant to be there for a week, but I was there after the first or session, second session uh, A.D. Boothroyd at the time said look I want to sign you do you want to sign here I said yeah I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll be interested in signing here of course he said right bring your agent down I'm going to get the paper signed up now and you're going to sign I said okay no problem so I, was, I phoned my agent I said to him right this is this is what A.D.'s just said to me this is what the gaffers just said to me can you can you get down here sharpish and you know we'll, we'll get this done and he said okay no problem but I've got one more team that are interested in signing you. And I said, oh, okay, but you know, this is, this is Watford. They're in the championship and they're, I think they were third or fourth at the time in the playoffs, getting ready to, to push for promotion. They were doing amazing. And I said, you know, it's, uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I really want to sign. And he said, um, all right, well, look, I've got one more club. It's Leeds United. And as soon as I heard that, I shook AD before his hand and I apologized for, what I was about to do and I left and I headed straight up the M1 to Fort Arch. Was that the law of Leeds at the time? Even despite them obviously going through the troubles that they were, they were going through at that time, was that the, the sound of the name of Leeds United, was that enough for you yeah, just to join? Yeah, yeah. Because you, you just have to look at the, the the history of the club, the players that have been there, the, the fan base around the world. The, it's it, it, there's not much like it in the world, you know, even even to today. Um, and we're, we're going back a while now. We're going back 13 years. And, but um, as soon as I said that to my dad, he, he started laughing. He thought I was joking because he's a Man United fan. So for him to hear that his son's on the verge of fighting for Leeds United, one of, one of Man United's biggest rivals, he, it was a bittersweet moment, but he was absolutely over the moon for it as well. So he travelled up with me. And we, we got it all done and dusted and signed off. And as soon as I signed the paper, I shook it, made some of the ink on the side, kept my copy, walked out of four parts and, and sat in the car with my dad. And we just started laughing and giggling and high-fiving and hugging. And it was just, it was just absolutely amazing. <laughs> absolutely amazing. How, how did you uh, hand in your, your notice at the, at the day job at the time then? So I was working at RAC, changing windscreens and windows and sunroofs and uh, things like that. So I I didn't tell them that I was that I had a trial or that I was going up to Leeds. One of the guys that I was working with, Johnny, he phoned me two days after. So the first day, everybody thought I was sick. And then he saw it on the internet that evening. He tried to call me, but I was in the middle of doing like a, a press release, I think it was. So I phoned him back the following morning, which was, um, it was an interesting and, and a bizarre phone call because he said to me, Jay, just a quick one. Have you signed for Leeds United? I said, yeah, I have, mate. And he, he just started laughing and said, I can't believe what I'm hearing. It's amazing. Don't forget about us. <laughs> um, so that's, that's kind of how I, I handed in my resignation. At the, at the <laughs> Didn't even have to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. And obviously playing, playing uh, semi-pro football for Wordstone at the time, my manager, Gordon Bartley, I kept him in the loop with everything that was going on. He knew what was going, what was happening. And I think the club got a good see for, for uh, myself at the time as well. So, you know, it was, it was it was a win-win for everybody. What was it like, though, like you mentioned there, driving up the M1, a long way from home? What was that like, having to, to move away from home to a, a place like Leeds, a, a different sort of city? Not everyone, but a lot of the people in that city are behind the football club. It's the full focus. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a long way from Wealdstone, isn't it? It's a very long way from Wealdstone. So that was surreal. So I went from, on a Saturday, playing in front of maybe about 150 people, to a Tuesday night, the very next Tuesday night, playing against Crystal Palace at Ellen Road in front of 34,500 people. And 
that feeling, that is one of the most surreal moments in my whole career. It just felt like I had goosebumps all over me. It was just it was just the most bizarre, surreal scenario, taking into account where I'd come from. But one that will stick with me, obviously, forever and ever. Yeah, no, I believe it was Kevin Blackwell you signed for at, at the time. Looking back, had the club had a great chance of, of promotion, I believe, in, in that first season, yeah. losing that playoff final to, to, Watford, to Watford, of course. <laughs> yeah. is, is there any regrets yeah. now looking back at that decision not to join Watford because you could have been a, a Premier League footballer earlier in your career if, if you'd maybe have no, made that decision? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Maybe Bruce Roy came up to me after the game. So in the lead up to that game, I was under the impression that I was going to be on the bench and it's another opportunity for me to try and showcase my talents and show up the, the abilities that I have. And I, I still think to this day that I could have offered something slightly differently, uh, slightly different to what we had at the time. But obviously, you've got to respect the manager's decision. So I was I was left out of that, that match day squad for the final. We ended up losing 3-0 and I saw A.D. Bruce it after the game and he said to me, ah, see, it's a shame. You could have been a Premier League footballer. And I'm pretty sure my response was, I know, but don't worry, I'll be there, I'll get there one day or something along those lines. Or we, we'll get there one day. That's what I said. And he just looked and smirked and we shook hands and went our separate ways. So I don't, I don't regret it one bit because, you know, that was, that was right at the beginning of my journey. And that gave me a whole new focus. So if I'd ended up leaving and going straight to, to Watford in the Premier League, I wouldn't have had the, the experiences that I have had, um, which have, have helped me. And I wouldn't have been able to make certain, score the certain goals that I have scored or, been involved in certain teams that I have with players that I have you know things could have ended up completely differently and, you know you, you hear it all the time you hear stories about players who were very good players but who got injured and were, not, were never able to, to get back to, to their best and that, that could have been me so it's um, something that I cherish dearly and I'm, I'm blessed to have experienced getting so close with the team that I love and uh, my only regret is is that it it didn't happen while I was there. Did you have a sense of you touched on the, the Watford match in in the final losing three 0 not being a part of the match day squad? Did that give you a bit more hunger? Did that make you believe that you could make a difference to that Leeds United side in in the future because you didn't have the chance to make an impact that day? Yeah, definitely, definitely, and it made me work on certain aspects of my game that I saw other players in front of me that they they had that I didn't have. I I would never have, I, I was never that good in the air pinning players, but I saw players in front of me that were, were doing that. They never necessarily had the same, similar attributes to myself, but what they did have, they perfected and they worked on day in, day out. And initially, I thought it was all boring stuff and oh, you've done that before, why are you still doing it? Why are you practicing something else? But then you start realising it happens in a game. And when it does happen in a game, it, it comes a second nature because you do it so often. So I started doing things like that a little bit more often and try to make them easy for myself. And I don't think, you know, I've, I've, I've learned from, from different situations that I've been in and I still try to practice as much as I could while picking up and learning other, other attributes, other aspects of the game. But yeah, it, it, it definitely fueled my, my hunger. It definitely gave, it gave me a, another level that I never realised I had because I didn't want to be left out of the squad anymore. I didn't even want to be on the bench. I wanted to be number one pick. But for me to become that number one pick, there were certain things I had to work on. And that moment, those moments, just after the team had been named and my name wasn't on the, uh, on the bench, that kind of reaffirmed to myself what I needed to do and that I needed to work a little, that, bit, that bit harder. Was that part of the, the reason why you went on a few loan stints the year after, just to show showcase yourself, show to the, the, the yeah. team that you were good enough to to get that chance to to be the, the starting striker? Definitely, definitely, slightly out of the limelight as well, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way to to, to Carlisle or to Scunthorpe, because I learned a lot at both of those clubs. But when you're playing for a team with the magnitude of Leeds you're under a microscope all the time, you know, and, and any little mistakes that you make or anything that, that happens around you is, you know, it's showcased. Whereas it's not as much on show as it is at, at these other clubs. So it, it gave me an opportunity to, to step out of the, 
the, the so-called limelight and work on aspects of my game in a match situation without the added pressure of doing it wrong first time, second time, third time. And, and of course, no. that, that season, though, leads incredibly difficult season for the club, eventually relegated. Yeah. You you went out loan to yeah. Scunthorpe, as you mentioned, and won promotion yeah. to, to the championship. What was the club like from the period where you left and, and, and joined, you know, rejoined after your loan spell? I imagine it's it was a completely different sort of football club. It was, it was. It was so bizarre as well, because like you, like you just mentioned, the two clubs, one that I'm, I'm contracted to and one that I'm on loan with, has you know, one of them had leapfrogged the other one into into the opposite league. You know, and I I'm coming off the back of doing of of having a, a pretty decent spell at um, at Scunthorpe as well. It was surreal. But again, this is another moment um, in my career that I I cherish deeply as well because I I learned a lot because I got a regular run of games. You know, I think I played maybe 17 or 18 games in the back end of the season and scored a few goals as well. So my confidence was sky high. I knew I could do it in, in League One because I'd just done it, you know, in the back end of it. But I wanted to do it with Leeds and I wanted to, to have that with Leeds. So th- there was no ambition to to stay at Scunthorpe at the time to, to get a chance at, at championship football? So you're asking me if I would have preferred to sign for Scunthorpe or stay at Leeds United. Is, is that the question? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not necessarily saying. I'm saying. Would you like no, the opportunity? Obviously. You know, to to play at Scunthorpe. You know, in the in the championship. Again, if there's no disrespect to any club. If if it's Leeds United in League One or another team in the championship, I'm I'm going to pick Leeds. I'm going to pick Leeds because I'm a Leeds United fan. Leeds really seems to to mean a lot to you. Yeah, of course it does. Of course it does. So Leeds Leeds gave me that opportunity to showcase my my abilities but also to to change my life as well because I was on I was on a a difficult trek when we lead up to lead uh, leaving Leeds um uh, to joining Leeds sorry and by Leeds coming along and saying look we'll see you we'll take you under our, our wing and we'll appreciate you and, and help you in any way possible any which way possible that that really really showed me what Leeds is as a club as well, not just as a football club, but as a as a as a unity. You know, it's um, I had I'm still in contact now with with a couple of the guys that are there from my my stint, and you know, it's it's people like that that made it what it is. You know, Sticks Lockswood, Peter Lockswood, Sticks. I still speak with him, and I love that guy. I'll speak to him forever and a day now just because of everything he did for me and every all the, the time and attention he, he gave me and advice when I needed it. And when I was being a little bit silly, he also said to me, listen, you have to, you have to behave yourself. You can't do that because, and you know, he, he put, he helped me stay on the right track being 200 miles away from home as a, a 22, 23 year old kid. You know, it's very easy to get lost in, in the limelight and the glitz and the glamour and the, the other side of, of, of football, you know, um, and that's why Leeds means so much to me. You then obviously did get your chance when the club did go down into League One. Unbelievably difficult circumstances with the, the points deduction as well. What was yeah. that start to the season like, though, after, I think it was at Tramier away, the after first game? Yeah. The run that you went on then under Dennis Wise and, and Gus Poyer as his assistant that was yeah. was quite incredible at that, that time. Just tell us about... That period was it? Was it a case of you know um, everyone's against us sort of mentality? You know that the run itself seemed to galvanise the club in a way. Definitely, and we know irrelevant of what season it is or what type of what type of game it is. We know that anybody that comes to Ellen Road is going to treat uh, treat it like a cup final because the stadium. It's not even a stadium; it's an arena. It's an incredible arena. You know, people come there and they want to. They want to impress because they want to get that move to Leeds United. So we know that we're up against not only the 11 men on the field, but we're up against the fans as well. And we we had such a great unit in terms of the players that we had, the squad we had, the staff we had, the management team we had. We just kept everything so tight in-house. It was us against the world. And anybody that came to, to Ellen Road, they weren't just dealing with 11 players. They, they were dealing with 30 plus thousand people 
plus 11 gladiators on the field. You know, and that's, that, that was our mentality. That was our mindset right from the first game of that season all the way through until, until the end. Did that not bring its own pressure in terms of the players, though, having that weight of expectation? Obviously, Leeds United in League One, similar to maybe like Sunderland now in, in, in League One, that there is a massive weight yeah. of expectation for the club, isn't there, to, to win, at, well, especially at Ellen Road, to, to win week in, week out? Yeah, definitely. But we, we had such a great down-to-earth bunch of, uh, bunch of lads with us. It was easy not to get carried away with, with the stresses, with the pressures of it. We just left all the pressures as soon as we, we crossed that white line. And once we crossed the white line onto the field, that was it. We knew that it was us against them, 11 against 11. And we know that we're, our 11 is better than your 11. So there's nothing you can do that can beat us and our 11 when we're all on it. And after the first couple of games, you know, you started seeing the, the, the points deduction getting smaller and smaller. And that made the teams around us pay more attention to us, thinking, oh, hold on a minute. They started off with minus 15 points. We thought they were, they were gone. They were long gone. However, look at them now. After two games, you know, where are they now? After three games, wow, that, that deduction is getting smaller. And then it got to the fifth game of the season and we won and we cleared out the, the deficit. You know, we're back on zero points. And then we won the next game and we're off the bottom of the league. And as soon as we won that sixth game, everybody said, oh, OK, well, I'll tell you what, they, they could be promotion candidates here. And we definitely were. It was, it was a great feeling. It was a great feeling. We, we went onto every football pitch and you could see the fear in everybody's eyes when, when they, saw, they saw us pulling up in the coach and then they saw us in the, the, the home kits or the away kits. And they're thinking to themselves, oh, dearie me, I'll tell you what, we're in for one here. They look like they're all focused. They look like they're hungry. They look like they're, they're taking no prisoners today. And that's exactly what we did. You know, we, we, we were ruthless. We scored a lot of goals and we were just, we were just ruthless all over the field. And, and for you, though, to, to get the chance of playing week in, week out at a club like that, you really yeah. had the, it really gave you that opportunity to, to shine, didn't it, Dennis Wise? Gave you that chance to, to show what you were really made of. It did, it did. And again, Dennis is somebody that I, I cherish close to my heart as well for that exact reason. You know, without him showing the confidence in me um, and giving me that opportunity, even when things were may not may not have been going um, particularly well, he stuck with me, gave me that opportunity, put his arm around my shoulder and said to me, look, don't worry about that. Try and focus a little bit more on this bit. And when you do this, that will happen off the back of it. And then you'll be able to do this and that. So the advice that himself and, and Gus Boyette gave me was invaluable and the confidence they showed in me to stick with me through through good times and bad times that helped uh, that helped as well it helped my my confidence a massive lot when Gus did eventually leave the club how much of a negative impact did that have because at the time obviously Leeds were flying but then Gus went yeah. and things seemed to drop drop off a little bit w- was that the reason why they dropped off because Gus had left and sort of the, the team had been you know, used to working under him and Dennis? Um, yeah, quite possibly. Quite possibly. I think it's um, it's always difficult when somebody with with so much authority and and influence, uh, especially a positive one as as, as Gus is, um, leaves because you know he he offered so much in terms of uh, the things that he brought off um, the things that he brought to the to the club off the field um, as well as on the field. So with myself, he was a he was a great player, an, an attacking midfield player, and he said to me, "Look, for example, this is one of the ex- examples that I'm given. He, when we were training one day, he let the training continue, and he came over to me and stood right by me and said, right, when Bradley gets the ball in the middle of the field, this is what I want you to do because this is what I would want you to do if I were playing with you.' So he made me take a couple of steps backwards and then arch my run behind the defender rather than just sprinting in front of him and he gave me a reason as to why he said that he said um, if you do this movement the defender doesn't see where you are and by the time he turns his head you're already making the forward run and because of your pace nobody's going to catch you that was the first time somebody had given me that much information in, in and broke it down very simply for me as well and it's not just that moment that we missed I think there were a lot of other move, uh, moments with other players as well, and they we all just we all just missed that that 
that final touch, I guess. Of course, though, you eventually did make it to the playoff final under Gary McAllister after Dennis infamously left to go to Newcastle. What yep. was what did Gary McAllister bring to the club at that time when he when he first came in? There seemed to be a lot of you know focus on attacking football, which I'm guessing that you you enjoyed at the time. Yeah, we definitely did, uh, but it was more the I think what kind of went wrong at that time was I think he tried to change it too much too soon. He had great ideas and he was a great player as well. And he, he tried to get us to play exactly as he would play as a player. And I think given time, another six months or so, it would have worked out if he'd, if he'd started in pre-season or if he'd gradually tried to change it. But I think, I think he tried to change too much of what we were doing too soon into what he wanted. And, you know, we already had a, a winning mentality, a winning formula, something that was working for us. But, you know, I, I think I think his ideas were great. Like I said, I just I just think he, he it should have just been, you know, spread out a little bit, uh, spread out over a little bit of a longer period of time. How disappointing, though, was it to, against all the odds to reach that playoff final after starting the season with minus 15 points, to then lose it against Doncaster with so many Leeds United fans there at Wembley at the time to, to you know, to, to be playing in front of, I think it was like three quarters Leeds United fans there and, and to let yeah, let them was, down, that, that must have been tough for you guys. It was, it was, it was brutal. I think the thing that hurt the most was um, the fact that we we got into the playoffs in the first place. From in-house, we shouldn't have been in the playoffs. We should have gone up automatically. But there were a couple of results that went against us and they shouldn't have. And I think we, it was just, it was just difficult to, to accept, difficult to take. Yeah, it was it was just hard. It was just really hard, really hard. I don't I don't really like talking about it because it hurts me. <laughs> yeah, does it bring the memories back when it, when it when you think you know about it? Is it a very negative time? I imagine. It's did, a, I imagine it contrasts a lot to the Watford match, doesn't it? Because th- there was a real expectation that day that Leeds United were going to go up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think if we'd if we'd turn the season around if we if we turn the last couple of results before the actual playoffs around um, like I'm pretty sure we lost one that we should have drawn and we, we drew one that we should have won that would have been it we'd have gone up automatically um, but you know it's, it was it, it hurt so much it hurt so much the last thing we wanted the last thing we expected was to get as far as we did against all the odds and then crumble at the last hurdle Words can't really explain or describe the, the the pain and heartache that we felt at that time, leaving Wembley and going back to, to Leeds on the coach. And, you know, it, on every single journey, regardless of where it was, um, we were sky high. Every single journey, win, lose or draw on the, um, on the bus. But that was the one journey that, that was just silent for pretty much the majority of the way back. And that just, that just showed the pain that everybody had felt, you know, being as close as we had, getting as close as we had gotten to, 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 to have just fallen at the last hurdle. Was there a bit of a hangover this season afterwards, do you believe, after going through so much heartache that the expectation was obviously there again and the first half of the season, the club really didn't deliver, did they, in terms of the league? Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's difficult to say, really, um, because we're still doing exactly the same things. We're still trying to move the same way and, and play the same way but teams had, had clocked on to what it was we were doing and, and where we were and, and the game we, we, we were trying to play so they played very defensively and then hit us on the counter attack or they were right in our faces there were no there were no teams that played in between like like we had the previous season but then you know it, it, it got to a point in the season where we started to find spaces and gaps and you know, it um, it all started to fall into place. And that summer as well, a player which you formed a, a fantastic partnership with in Luciano Becchio joined the club. How how beneficial yeah. was he for you? How much did you relish playing in that partnership? You, you seem to, to flourish together. Oh, I love him. I love him. He's um, he's amazing. He's amazing. Not just because of his 
on-field attributes, but he's one of the funniest people I know as well. Um, he's a lovely guy. And we, we got him really well outside of football. And that that was part of the battle as well. I think as soon as you, you especially as a forward uh, in terms of confidence type players, if, you, if you're able to, to form a close relationship with the person you're playing up front with or playing in midfield with or in defence with, you'll have a great understanding of their mentality and the things that they want to do and don't want to do and the way that play, the way they play and the way they don't play. I knew exactly what he liked and he knew exactly what I liked and we just worked on it every day trying to find the best possible solution to make both of us flourish. And if we're flourishing and we're the, the, the first line of attack, you know, everybody's going to flourish and everybody's going to prosper. And that, that works. Yeah, because of course, well both of us. It's, it's a very unlikely partnership, though, isn't it? Coming from, I believe he came from the Spanish second division at the time, coming from originally from he Argentina. Did, yeah. Yeah. You know, to, to strike up a friendship with someone, you know, like yourself who, you know, played previously in non league and then eventually joins Leeds. Two different sort of worlds you've come from, but you, like you say, you, you've seemed to, you know, your football bond seemed to be there from the Click off. Straight away. Yeah, of course, of course. But it's, it's partially because he couldn't speak great English, so I was teaching him. I was, I was teaching him how to speak English. Obviously, doing the standard things that you do, i.e. not teaching him the correct words or the correct phrases. Like, I had a laugh with him. And he understood He understood the banter and he understood the funny side of it as well. So when I was getting Spanish lessons from him, he was doing the same thing to me as well. So instead of me asking, hi, where's the bread? He was saying, hi, where's the dog? I'm hungry. And things like that. So... You know, we had a very similar mindset, very similar um, sense of humour as well. Um, and I think that, that also helped. What was the sort of the best sort of story you've got from that from that era at Leeds United? Into, you mentioned there you had a great bond with Luciano, but in, in terms of you know, clean stories, obviously, what, what's the best one that you can <laughs> tell in terms of you know, some of the, the, the players that were there at the time? Because there were some, quite, some characters in that squad, weren't there? There was, there's a, there was a lot of characters in that squad. I'm pretty sure... I'd go as far as to say about 85, 90% of that squad were just comedians and their second hobby, their second job was football. Ah, wow, you put me on the spot. I've seen, I've seen all sorts. I've seen all sorts. Obviously, a a lot you can't really say on radio. You're going to have to come back to me. I'm going I'll to come to back to you at the, at the end of one. the podcast. I'll come back and ask that again. Later that season, we saw that Gary got sacked and yeah. uh, Simon Grayson came in. Did, did you know instantly when Simon came in that he was going to do something special at the football club? Because he seemed to really, you know, get leads straight away, didn't he? Yeah, you could tell because he had he had a different level of hunger. He had a point to prove. He he wanted to show everybody, right? Yes, I am young. Agreed and granted. However, if you stick by me and if you you listen to me, I've got something that works here. And you know, I think. With the team that he had around him, with Glenn Sardin, with Ian Miller, Dusty, you know, these guys, between the three of them, they had a great blueprint. And it worked. It just worked. Everything they did worked. You know, we had sticky moments at times, granted, but, you know, the overall bigger picture was um, a very nice, very confident, very comfortable um, situation. And he came close in that, in that first season again, eventually guided the club to the playoffs. Yeah. Disappointment yeah. again, but really yeah. really sowed the seeds, didn't it, for, for the season afterwards with obviously an exciting set of young players young coming team. through as well in the team. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And this is this is the season that you started seeing Fabian Delph, you started seeing, you know, we had Max Gradle. There, there were a lot of players, technically gifted players, comfortable on the ball, very young. You could see the confidence that they had. They managed to get those opportunities and get the, the moves that they did off the back of it. They've all grown and they've all shown exactly what it is that they, they've got and what they can do. We were just fortunate enough to get them at the perfect time. Get them coming through at the perfect time. Of course, it wasn't just Leeds who were a big club in that division at the time. You had the likes of obviously Norwich City in the following season. That was a, a, a very difficult battle, as, as I remember, in terms of going for, you know, going for promotion against teams like that. Just, but just tell us, in terms of that season, what what were what what, what galvanised you to, to to go up? I imagine the, the match at Old Trafford would have been 
would have been up there for you. Definitely, definitely. If we could beat United, we could beat anyone. <laughs> and that, that that was the the, the focus. As soon as, as soon as we saw them in the, the the draw, and we saw that we were drawn against them, that was it. We knew we were going to win that game. We did you really, did you honestly believe that you had a chance? Of course, of course. We were we were all hungry. We all had something to offer, and we knew they were going to underestimate us. We knew it. You know, you could just tell. You could see it in their eyes when we when we lined up against them. You could see it in their eyes. They they were looking beyond us. They were looking past us. And you know, fortunately for us, we took our opportunity. We took our chance. And it it, it could have been a few more, to be honest with you. It could have been maybe three or three or four one, uh, three or four one, three or four two. You know, we could have we could have absolutely cleaned up. But you know, they they made a couple of great saves. We had a few great blocks on the line, etc. You know, so it was meant to be that we won. It was it, it was just trying to figure out by what scoreline. You've mentioned at the start there that your dad supported Manchester United. Did he did he speak to you after uh, the match? Yeah, not straight away. <laughs> he, you know, what, he was he was stuck between a rock and a hard place. Like he's a he's a massive he's a massive United fan, and you know I'll never take that away from him. Uh, but I did massively rub it in his face, massively. You know, I had a great great week after that. <laughs> For you, though, what was that moment like? That It really you know, is a defining moment of your career, that, that goal at Old Trafford. What, what, what is it like to, to score a goal of that magnitude against Leeds United's biggest rivals, against all the odds, to, to go to Old Trafford and score the winner? For you personally, that must be right up there in life, not just your career. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, it, it's still very surreal speaking about it from a... From a from my perspective because I watch it back and I'm like, oh, oh wow, that was great. That was decent. Who's this guy? Oh, it's me. Not in like a, a ha-ha, look at me kind of way, but in a, wow, how surreal is this? This is um, this is an amazing thing that's happened, an amazing moment that I've just been through. And, you know, I'm, I'm, look at what I've done. You know, like I said to you before, my dad, he's a, he's a United fan, so we used to watch them playing on TV all the time. And I used to think to myself, ah, they're rubbish, I could do that. <laughs> and now I've, I've shown my kids, and my kids are, are, are looking at me the same way I was looking at my dad, saying, ah, oh, that's, yeah, that's easy, I could do that. <laughs> you know? So it's, um, it's very surreal. It's still not sunk in yet, all these years later. And I don't think it ever will, if I'm honest with you. It's, um, it's a moment that will always, always be dear to my heart, and it, it's something that I'm extremely proud of as well. Not just from a personal perspective, but from from that team that I was in, to to have been able to achieve what we did on that day, um, is is a phenomenal feat. Yeah, I think I spoke to, to Dean Windass, who had, who said something similar about his goal in the, in the playoff final. Of course, he the said that some, final, yeah, yeah he, he said that he believed that someone was looking down on him that day, despite him not being a religious man. Mm, I mean, most definitely. Looking into that though, you were attracting interest there from other clubs prior to that match and I believe I'm, I'm right in saying that you did put in a transfer request in, in, that month um, yeah I did but um, what, what was the thinking behind that what, what was your head turned was it because it was a I believe Newcastle at the time were, were, were sniffing around you was it because it was another big football club no it was it was it was out of frustration um, and looking back at something that I I regret doing but like I said my whole journey even up until this very day has been a learning curve so I I I've often done things on impulse because things haven't necessarily gone my way or because I don't necessarily like or agree with what it is that's happened. But, you know, that's something that I did in the spirit of the moment and then I retracted it as well. Once I'd spoken to my family, once I'd spoken to Simon, Grayson as well, you know, and it's, it's something that that happened. It's there, it's, but it's, it's, it's not me and it doesn't determine my thoughts or feelings on uh, on the club. I believe it was actually a few days before that that Manchester United match as well that you did hand the transfer request in. Did that put your position in in doubt in in the match? Did Simon talk to you? Say did you did you want to miss out on on that occasion or were you always going to play in it? In my eyes, I was always going to play in it, one hundred percent. But at the same time, like I said, I was I was a little bit hot headed um, when I was younger and. Everybody's everybody's done something that they they're not proud of. But 
as long as you learn from it and you grow and you move forward from it and you don't make that same mistake again, it's um, you know, it's something that you can look back on and say, right, well, I did this. I'm glad I did it because I've learned from it, but I know that I, I'm in a, I was in a position where I shouldn't have done. And that's, that's where I'm at. Focusing back on, on the season itself now, talk yeah. us through the drama, though, of that final. Obviously, the Leeds can't ever do anything the easy way. <laughs> you know, that that yeah, match against Bristol true. Rovers, did you think the club had blown it when well uh, when Max got Max Gradle got sent off and you weren't winning the match at the time? Did you think the club had almost thrown away what you'd achieved? I'd be lying if I said no. There was a part of me that thought to myself, oh, for the third year in a row, we've been so close, third or fourth year even, we've been so close every single year and now we're in a we're in a great a great moment we're we're in great form we've got a great team great energy you know we're coming into the game to the game full of confidence against a team we know that we're we're better than and this is this is so this is the first game of the season that I'm captain in as well so I I've, I've got the weight of the uh, captain's armband on my shoulders and that is something that alongside everything else in my career that's one of my proudest moments to lead Leeds United out at Ellen Road. It's one of my proudest moments. It's up there with, with scoring uh, against United. That that I had all of that and then all of a sudden it had just been snatched away from me just like that. It felt like when um, when Maxi got sent off, I thought to myself, no way is this happening today. And no way while I've got the armband. Surely not. Right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to regroup and figure this out and figure out what we're going to do, how we're going to get to the next level, how we can make it, how we, how we can make it work for us. And fortunately, we had a lot of confidence, a lot of confident players, a lot of technically gifted, and we had a lot of dogs in our team as well, a lot of players that, that took no prisoners. So for me, we had the perfect balance to, to get through, to make it through, to win that game, regardless of what happened. And you again had that moment, though, of course. You had the moment where everyone was... The, the weight of expectation on the day was on you. You were, Like you said, you were made captain that day and eventually you delivered. What what was that like to finally, in terms of the league, to deliver something? Oh, my word. Again, it's, it's, it was so surreal. So surreal because I hadn't been as close as I'd been and then to get to, a, to, to the point where we were as well and be so close and almost have it pulled away from us you know it, it was it was it was almost tough to take it was almost tough to take but then as soon as I saw the first goal go in I thought to myself right they equalise us right that's it they can't stop us now we've got it and then ball fell to Bradley and B ran through instead of passing it to me which I still think to this day he should have done he uh, decided to have a shot on goal and I'm glad that he did do because the keeper managed to parry it right into my path, bouncing. As soon as it came to me, my training came into effect and I said, right, hit it down into the ground underneath the goalkeeper, down into the ground. And I kept on replaying this moment. And I think it, I, I said it to myself about a hundred times in the space of about a second or two when it was bouncing. And as soon as I made contact with it, I knew it was in. I knew it was in. And that was, it was that moment I said, right, this is it. We have made it. This is it. We've done it now. We have done it. They can't. There's no way they can get back at us after this. No way. And fortunately, I was right. And the sense of relief around the club uh, at the time, I imagine that was something else. It was. It was. It was like, finally, thank goodness for that. I can't believe we've actually done it. At last. At long last. You know, we, we've been trying for so, so, so many years. And we just kept on falling short. Everything just, the, the puzzles just seemed to to fit. It was, oh, it was just such a, a such a moment that, that just filled you with not only relief, but the, the level of excitement. And, and I was just, I was, I was on cloud nine. Absolutely amazing. But then after that, you obviously joined Everton. Was that agreed before you, you played in the match? Were, were you always going to leave the club? Well, I never, I never wanted to leave the club initially, but under the the circumstances that were in front of us, I didn't, I didn't have any choice, which was, which was frustrating. But at the same time, I'm, I'm very glad, proud, and fortunate to have been able to to represent not only Leeds United and to have done the 
experience the things that I have done with Leeds, but to have been able to play in the Premier League with another team that is it's an absolutely amazing club as well. It's it's not that different to Leeds United. It's a, a it's a club where all the fans are as one. You know, they they stick with you for through thick and thin, through good times, through bad, and you know that's that's one of the things that I was glad that I ended up moving there rather than anywhere else. And of course, you had big moments there as well in that season. That 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 goal against Chelsea was it at the time? What was that? Yeah, which one was that? Was that Stamford Bridge or was that Goodison? The one where you ran the, the length of the pitch. Oh right, Goodison. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, um, I mean that that must yeah, have that been incredible. Well. <laughs> that was fun as well. Yeah, I, I've, yeah, yeah, it was. It was because the first the first part of that move. I lifted it over Frank Lampard's legs. You know, he tried to slide tackle me and I lifted it over his legs. And I remember thinking to myself, <laughs> that's Frank Lampard. You know, it, it, still, it was still surreal to myself even then. I had a little bit of luck getting past, I think it was John Terry and, and maybe somebody else. And then a check came out and, you know, one of my favourite goals is, is a little dink, a little chip. I don't think he read that memo. You know, I just I just filled him in a little bit and let him know that you don't go down early, pal. But it was, it was so surreal. It's another moment that will always stick with me. And to have the chance, of course, to play in the Premier League, not not with Leeds, but w- yeah. with Everton, to play for, a, like you've talked about there, a massive football club, In it makes yeah. it even more special to have that opportunity, maybe which, you know, if you'd have joined the Premier League with a, a different side, you wouldn't have, you know, savoured as much. Probably not, probably not. I think there are only there are only really three teams um, that I would have loved to have joined in the Premier League: Leeds United, Everton, and Arsenal. Arsenal because I, I used to be an Arsenal fan. I initially started off to wind my dad up, but then you know they had a lot of players in the team that, that I actually grew fond of, that I I really appreciated and respected in terms of what they'd done on and off the field. And for example, Ian Wright, he came through when he was 22, also, you know, and that. That's something that I can resonate with his his upbringing, etc. So I I started to fall in love with this team. You know that, that's why they were were the third team that I would have I would have joined. Just tell us how that move came about when when you were joining Everton. Were, were you surprised that they were the club that were interested in signing you? I mean, you were an attractive proposition, of course, being being a free transfer, a free well. agent. Yeah, it was. It, it's every move is surreal. Every move is surreal because one thing you have to remember is we're all people at the end of the day. And we all have abilities, whether that's, you know, on a football field, on a basketball court, in an office. You know, we're all we're all great at something. It's just finding what you're great at. And there are times where things don't necessarily go your way. You're not necessarily as great as you are portrayed. But to to continue to get those moves to, to these clubs that everybody know and love for one reason or another is always it's always surprising and it always will be surprising. And anybody that says otherwise I don't think they're being genuinely true to themselves. Did you believe, though, when you did have that quite fairly successful first season in the Premier League with, with Everton, did you believe that you should have had more of a chance to to impress, to show your worth? Because you were quickly let yeah, go, definitely. weren't you, to, to Leicester at the time? Yeah, I, I definitely do. But again, it, there's, there's things that happen outside of the football field in the offices that you have no control over. So, you know, I was a free transfer they got me in for free and a year later somebody's offering up however many millions of quid. You can't really, there's not much you can do about that, especially when you're told that you're not, you're not going to play so you might as well, uh, you might as well go and get some game time somewhere else. You know, that's, that's, that's hard to take. What was the come down though as well? Was that difficult to take having to, you know, what you've reached the Premier League and then it's taken away from you so, so quickly? Yes and no. Yes and no. Yes, because it's the Premier League but, also, at the same time, I've, I've experienced it now and I've had a great time and I've met some great people. I've had some amazing experiences. But I'm also going to a club who have got humongous, uh, humongous aspirations and they, they're not afraid to spend the money on the right players to get that, to get to where everything else, you know. And I truly, genuinely believe that, that we were going to make it, that we are going to get there. I think the end of that first season, we, I think we missed out by out on the playoffs by a, a, a point or two, and then it, it just again these things these things happen, 
I felt that heartache again was missing out on it. There's only so much you can do. You can you can you can either let it get to you and and bring you down, or you can get on with it and appreciate every day that you're in the the, the job that you absolutely love doing. I I chose to appreciate what I was doing and just try and better myself and push myself day by day. Did you find it difficult that time of your career though? The the fact that you were moving around to to different football clubs. Over a, after a sustained period at, at Leeds, of course, and then joining Everton, did, did you find it difficult to sort of settle anywhere? Because you, you had a, a, a quite a few different moves at the time, going to Leicester, then then Bolton, a few loan spells. W- was that was yeah. that hard for you to sort of? Was that not not regret? I suppose yeah. but w- was it was it difficult for you to take? It was it was tough. It was a tough period. I'll be honest, but it's it's one that I always try to learn from. Like if, you, if you're not learning from situations that you're in. Then you know you're only going to stay still. So I try to I try to learn from them, understand what may have gone right or wrong, and how to to change that. And it just so happened to to come around at the same time. So I was looking for something that wasn't necessarily there, which is why I kept on jumping from club to club. There were things that I, I should have done, I could have done slightly differently, but I was still uh, young. I was still learning, and you know you make you make strange decisions when you're under pressure sometimes. And that's, that's what I did with one or two of the moves. Simon Grayson, though, eventually signed you to play under him again for Preston. Did did you feel that that move revitalised your career? Because some of the, like we mentioned, some of the moves there that you did go on didn't have as yeah, much, yeah, much yeah. success. Did you believe that Simon was onto something special again? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Wherever Simon goes, I would always sign him because I appreciate him and I respect him for his, his decision making and what he says and does. Only because I know he knows how to get the best out of not just myself, but the players that he has. So sometimes you have players that may not necessarily have been, have gotten into the team of the year, but he's got them playing like they are the best players. And it's all in his approach. And I, I, I appreciate and I love and I respect that, which is why I feel he's been, he's been very uh, successful doing what he's done. And of course, to, to win a promotion again, scoring. A hat trick at Wembley, of course, another career <laughs> highlight for you. How how, how highly do, do you hold that in in terms of your footballing memories and and your, your time at Preston as a whole? How how highly do you regard that? Well, it'd be it'd be hard not to be in the right up there at the top. I don't I don't really know many players that have scored a hat trick at Wembley, you know. And that's that's what that's what my dad keeps on saying. That's what my father in law keeps on saying. These are these are moments that will will last forever, and I'm hoping not many many other players do it. So then, you know, my name keeps popping up in quizzes. <laughs> um, you know, my whole time at Preston, it came at the perfect time for me. I was I was on a downer. I was starting to think that maybe I don't know, maybe this, this whole football thing isn't isn't for me because I'm not getting the same chances, opportunities that I have done in the past. People are wanting completely different things from me that I'm not necessarily used to or or that great at or maybe not have that much time to, to try and get right perfect the, the art the craft and then when when Simon popped up and said look I know it's the, the league below where you are but come over and I'll get you firing again and, and we could get I'll get you promoted I was like yeah fine it sounds great let's do it and I just I just knew from the first day seeing the way the, the guys played and trained uh, trained and played I knew he was onto something else again and I um. I jumped at the opportunity and I, I grabbed it with both hands. I had a little bit of a slow start, but then once I once I I got used to the pace of the game again, etc., I really started enjoying myself. And you know, when I enjoy myself, that's when that's when you see the best of me, and I have a lot of confidence in front of goal. And after the, the spell at Preston, difficult for you years again in terms of having injuries when you when you when you joined yeah. Bury, and now you've you've left Bury. Looking at it yeah. from now, free agent. Uh, have you got any? You know, have you had any contact with with Simon first of all to join to join Blackpool? Is that something which which could be you know happening, or would, you would be interested in maybe joining Simon Grayson again after so many successful years? Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. I um I've got I've got a few things going on outside of outside of football. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a, a free agent, stroke retired, just because of the injuries that I've had. I've had uh, three pretty bad knee injuries over the last four years, so. Um, the last thing I want to do, which I don't feel comfortable doing, is signing another contract with somebody and then not playing and you know taking the money for not doing anything. I I, I don't like that. 
So um, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I'll be playing any, any more football anytime soon. I want to be able to run around with the kids and, and not worry about having my knees give way or anything. So I've got a, a vegan protein company, which is keeping me occupied. It's called Supernova. And I'm doing my coaching badges also. So I've given Simon a call. He's, he, he knows what I'm up to. So hopefully hopefully we've got something in the pipeline within the football industry. I've had a couple of phone calls from, from managers, etc., asking if I'd like to come down and play for them. I would. I've still got the football bug. I love it to bits. But I don't think I can. I don't think I can keep going. If I'm honest, I've had a great time, and I'd, I'd rather rather leave the game knowing that I've I've enjoyed it and people have enjoyed what I've done. Yeah, and go out on a high, so to speak. And we've talked about throughout this podcast. We've talked about the career highlights. But what would you hold at the very top? What What would you rank as the best moment in your career? <sighs> wow, it's, it's almost an impossible question. Because there are so um, many moments like we, we, we've talked there, about. Yeah, so many, so many. Um, so it would have to be, oh, wow. Well, <laughs> maybe the very first contract that I signed at Leeds United because I knew now I've got the opportunity to show everybody what I can do. Followed closely by the goal against United. Followed closely again by the hat trick at Wembley. Followed closely again by the goal against Chelsea from where I ran the pitch. Followed closely by me wearing the captain's armband at Leeds and lead, uh, leading Leeds out. I, I, I genuinely don't know. I've scored goals against local rivals, which are massive, important games. Like for Leicester, I scored a hat trick against Nottingham Forest, which um, which is quite a big one as well. The, the, the list is it's a long list, <laughs> but I've just had I've just had so many amazing moments, and I've appreciated every single one of them. Every single one. How much are you looking forward to now? You, you've said it, mentioned it earlier, but how much are you looking forward to that next chapter, though, after your footballing, your playing career, to, to still be, in, to, to be involved in the business you're involved in, but also to be involved within yeah. the game? I'm super excited, super excited, because I've picked up a lot of knowledge along the way, and a lot of things that I've not necessarily been able to do, I can, I can tell a load of the younger players how to, how to improve on certain aspects of their game to help them. Because I've seen it, you, you, you see it firsthand. When you play with so many players that are young, you can see that they've got the technical ability and the talent, but they might not necessarily have the positional sense. So it's, it, that's something that I, I found that I, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed playing in positions that work. But I, I, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see what the future holds. And there's, there's, there's no boundaries. I'm, I'm open to, to all opportunities. Well, Jermaine, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the Official EFL podcast. Thanks again for for joining us and uh, good luck in whatever the, the future holds for you. Like you say, you're very excited about it. Ah, oh, pleasure. The pleasure's been mine. Thank you very much for having me on. The official EFL podcast. The best reaction to all the match action. Available every week.